Hi everyone, it's Teacher Janelle. I hope you're having a great day at home. Today I want to share with you something really special that has a connection to the book I read to you earlier this week about the dinosaur eggs. If you remember in the story of the dinosaur eggs, the man was walking along the beach and he found three eggs. Well, a few weeks ago, a mother at our school brought us three fertilized eggs and right before school closed, we put them in this incubator at our school. I'm gonna lift it up so you can see it. When school decided to close, I decided to bring the incubator to my house and we've been watching the eggs and noticing how they've been turning every hour. The machine turns the eggs for us every hour. And we've been noticing the countdown. And today, our countdown is at seven days. So in seven days, hopefully, these eggs will hatch. Just so you can see one up close, I'm gonna pull one out. I'm gonna pull, be very gentle, but you can see one right there. You're probably wondering why I drew something on it. I did that so that I make sure that they're turning the way they're supposed to. put it back very gently. So for the next seven days, we're going to be counting down for these chickens to hatch. And if they do hatch, I will make sure I film it so you can see it. Teacher Connie suggested that when I talked about chicken eggs, I read this book, Chickens Are Not, Aren't the Only Ones by Ruth Heller. Chickens lay the eggs you buy. The eggs you boil or fry or die or leave alone so you can see what grew inside naturally. Chickens aren't the only ones. Every bird, wild or tame, does the same. The ostrich lays the largest eggs. The hummingbird, the smallest. Chickens aren't the only ones. Most snakes lay eggs and lizards too, and crocodiles and turtles do. And dinosaurs who are extinct, but they were reptiles too. Frogs and toads and salamanders lay eggs, and when they hatch, they're tadpoles who grow legs and climb a lily pad, just like their mom and dad. They don't have claws or scaly skins. They are called amphibians. Fish eggs float up to the surface or sink to the bottom of the ocean floor. The mother seahorse lays her eggs in the father's pouch. He keeps them there until they hatch, and then he's through. I think that's nice of him, don't you? These fathers, too, are helping out by guarding eggs protected by that foamy mass that's floating by, and they won't leave until they're sure that all the eggs have hatched. These don't look like eggs to me, but they were laid in the sea. This one by a shark. This one by a ray. Is a mermaid's purse, they say. The octopus is said to shed 100,000 eggs and then to hang them up in strings attached to rocks or caves. 
The moon snail's eggs are mixed with sand to form this collar looking band. Spiders wrap their eggs in sacks and snails, you know, are very slow, but they lay eggs that hatch and grow and do so. Insects who have six legs and lay many different kinds of eggs. This one will hatch into a hungry caterpillar who will grow and grow and grow and then climb up a stem and chase into this a chrysalis and change again one summer more. That's how a butterfly is born. <clears throat> Animals with fur or hair who nurse their young and don't lay eggs are known as mammals or mammalia, spiny anteater, duckbill platypus, but these are two exceptions, and they both live in Australia. Chickens aren't the only ones. There's no more to discuss. Everyone who lays an egg is a oviparous. Animals who don't lay eggs have babies born alive. And well, but that's another tale to tell. Boys and girls, I hope you enjoyed my book. And I hope that you tune in for my next story in a couple days where I can show you the progress of the eggs that are incubating at our house. Teacher Janelle misses you so much and looks forward to seeing you on video again soon. Bye-bye.